Hello, everyone. A very good afternoon to one and all. And thank you for making time to learn together in today's OER ASD research webinar entitled Towards an Active Citizenship, Nurturing, Engaged, and Concerned Citizens. My name is uh, Dr. Hyron from the National Institute of Education, Nanyang Technological University. And I'll be your moderator for this webinar. For this afternoon, uh, we shall have four keynote speakers covering a range of pertinent topics relating, relating to CCE. At the end of each keynote presentation, at the end of all the keynote presentation, we shall have a panel discussion. Along the way, do feel free to type your questions or comments in the Q&A function. I shall now introduce the first keynote speaker for today. Uh, our, our first keynote speaker is uh, Dr. Suzanne Chu, Associate Professor, English Language and Literature Academic Group, NIE NTU Singapore. Uh, Dr. Chu is Associate Professor of the English Language and Literature Academic Group at NIE. Her research has been published in various peer-reviewed journals, such as Harvard Educational Review, Reading Research Quarterly, Research in the Teaching of English, among others. Her book, Reading the World, the Globe and the Cosmos, Approaches to Teaching Literature for the 21st Century was awarded the Critics' uh, Choice Book Award by the American Educational Studies Association. Her, first, her most recent book is Teaching Ethics Through Literature, The Significance of Ethical Criticism in a Global Age. More information can be found on her website. So, uh, Dr. Chu, please. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me just share my slides. Okay, so uh, the title of my presentation is Cultivating Global Citizenship Virtues Through Critical and Ethical Engagements with Stories in the CCE Classroom. Okay, so I have 20 minutes, so I'm just going to start. Give me a second. Okay, so I'm going to be covering two parts. Uh, the first part looks at the importance of stories and ethical criticism for character education. And the second part, I'm going to talk about key pedagogical insights from our research. So let me start with part one, um, the uh, importance of stories and ethical criticism. So let me just set a little bit of the context first. Uh, we are living uh, in what is today termed a world of hyper-globalization. Hyper-globalization basically means that advances in technology and communications have intensified transnational exchanges and connectivity. I think this is uh, most clearly observed in the pandemic, right? Where a virus that starts in one place in a matter of three months can spread to the rest of the world, which shows how globally interconnected we have become. But this has come with certain risk, as you can see, um, and Singapore is not immune to it, right? Uh, extremism, racism, xenophobia. Uh, countries have transformed into what uh, the global study scholar Eurek Beck terms world risk societies, in which global risk now permeate everyday experiences. Now, all this has led to the recognition of the importance of uh, preparing our students to tackle the challenges of globalization. And this impetus informs many of the education frameworks and curricula in Singapore. So for example, um, our Swiss role, the 21CC framework, you can see one of the key competencies has to do with civic literacy, global awareness, you know, cross-cultural skills. In our CCE 2021 uh, curriculum, I think what is new is the whole emphasis on knowing Asia, um, digital literacy, right? Um, the emphasis that every teacher is a CCE teacher, every teacher should think about facilitating discussions about contemporary issues on even sensitive topics like race and religion, bullying, online media. Another subject would be our literature curriculum, the new uh, literature syllabus. For example, one of the key desired outcomes has to do with developing empathetic and global thinkers who can empathize with the experiences of others and who are globally aware. And I, I don't think this is just about literature. I think in many other subjects as well, this is an important objective. So when we talk about uh, globally competent teaching, what, what are the components that teachers need to equip students with? So this uh, table kind of summarizes some of the key knowledge, dispositions and skills. So in terms of dispositions, empathy, perspective taking, concern for justice has become very important. In terms of knowledge, it's about being aware of current issues in the world, being uh, aware of the world as interconnected and interdependent, uh, experiential understanding of multiple cultures, 
uh, communicating in multiple languages would be a plus in a globalized workplace. In terms of skills, it's about how we can prepare students to negotiate values, diversity, and differences. Um, how we can provide content-aligned investigations, how we can equip them with critical thinking skills to investigate world issues. In terms of skills, it would be things like intercultural conversations, intercultural partnerships, and so on. So these are some elements of important global dispositions, knowledge, and skills. Now, in this talk, I'm going to focus on the role of stories. Stories are very powerful tools. And it, this goes all the way back if you think about some of the key philosophers from, you know, Jesus who used parables, uh, Confucius who used analogies, Plato, right, who used mythologies. Many of the key teachers, philosophers, religious leaders often use stories when it comes to developing character. When, when you talk about dispositions, knowledge and skills, stories play a most crucial role in the dispositional aspect especially in dispositions of empathy and a concern for justice. They're especially powerful to develop what we call global citizenship virtues, empathy, perspective taking, and concern for justice. But let me uh, explain what these terms mean first. So virtues basically are interrelated with the other term dispositions. They basically refer to habitual character dispositions. In other words, dispositions that have become long-term habits. This is what we mean by virtues. Um, and it includes, you know, uh, in relation to key theorists, you can go all the way back to Aristotle, right? Who talks a lot about virtues and Aristotle talks about two key virtues, intellectual virtues and moral virtues. And for Aristotle, virtues occur through practicing, practicing regularly and continuously so that they become habitual over the long term. Another key philosopher would be Confucius who talks about moral virtues, again, occurring through practice. A key moral virtue is Ren, or uh, this idea of benevolence towards others. And this idea of Ren or benevolence towards others starts from your home, your family, your community, but then extends outwards to the world. Uh, I love this quote from the NLX, right? He says, uh, a humane person because he wishes someone to, to because he wishes to reach his goal, he helps others reach theirs. And that is the essence of flourishing. It's not about flourishing of the self, but it's how the self can help others flourish in the world. So that those are key uh, global virtues. So why are stories powerful? I want to talk about complex stories, not just any stories, but complex stories. Complex stories are those that are open-ended and to provide, I'm going to use this term quite often, they provide a launch pad for dialogue um, and therefore facilitate a more dialogic rather than didactic classroom. Stories are immersive uh, and they engage the emotions. They provide a certain context whereby you can see ethics in action. So uh, the scholar Wayne Bull says that stories provide the platform for what is called applied ethics. Because through stories, when you look at how characters behave and respond and the choices they make, these are virtual ethical case studies that echo the real world ethical dilemmas that we face. So therefore, they provide a very powerful platform for students to engage in applied ethics and ethical thinking. So let me just give you an example um, from this book called The Paper Boat um, by Tao Lam. And it's about the refugee experience. And here you can see, you know, why there's this sense of enigma, right? Why are refugees depicted as ants? Why is their experience of traveling depicted as being on boats? So stories immediately captivate, especially those that are visual, okay? Um, and stories become a launch pad, meaning they can be a starting point but teachers can then bring in other texts like historical and factual texts. So for example, we can ask, how is this experience of the refugee depicted in this picture book compared to real world experiences of refugees? And students can engage in this kind of comparison as they analyze texts. So this is just my introduction. Um, this comes from our ERFP uh, project. Uh, cultivating cosmopolitan virtues through critical aesthetic and ethical engagement with literature that took place over three years from 2018 to 2020. 
Uh, we focus on the use of literature to develop what is called cosmopolitan virtues. Cosmopolitanism basically means citizen of the world. So it's similar to the term global virtues. So we had several phases. Phase one was a national survey uh, of 200 over 30 uh, teachers. Uh, phase two, we did a qualitative study uh, of 11 teachers. We went into their classrooms to observe their practices. And phase three, we worked with these teachers to design three units that I'll share about later, exploring Asia through poetry, exploring race and identity through Singapore literature and the use of ensemble drama pedagogy. And this was basically our research team uh, um, that included uh, an external collaborator from MOE and uh, 10 teachers from various schools. So the aim of the project was actually to explore how literary texts can facilitate these cosmopolitan virtues. And the project centered on literature teachers and classrooms. So one of the key findings from our national survey and also from our classroom observations was that a lot of aesthetic engagement continued to dominate literature teaching. And this kind of uh, aligned with the high stakes exam. So if you can see this diagram, you can see that analyzing plot character setting giving a personal response, analyzing the author style were top practices in the classroom. But things like, you know, connecting text to Singapore issues, connecting text to contemporary issues tended to be lower in terms of the ratings. So this led us to theorize the pedagogy of ethical criticism, basically how we can use literature, okay, to engage students in questions about ethics. So we have shared this uh, at several seminars and platforms. You can visit our website to, to, to take a look at the resources, uh, nie.edu.sg, 21cc literature, and also my website, suzanchu.com. Uh, just click on videos. So ethical criticism basically means the use of narratives for critical aesthetic and ethical engagement in relation to ethics. Okay, for literature teachers, having knowledge of aesthetic techniques is a bonus. Okay, and of course, this is central to the discipline of literature, right? The knowledge of these aesthetic techniques. And as a literature teacher, we can think about how these various aesthetic techniques can provoke critiques of ethical ideas in text. But today's seminar, uh, most of us are not literature teachers. So I'm going to focus on this second group, which are CCE teachers who are in other disciplines that may not be liter literature. So knowledge of aesthetic techniques, as I said, is a bonus, but it's not a requirement for ethical criticism. CCE teachers or whatever discipline you are from can still use ethical criticism to engage students in the critical ethical analysis of stories. And through this, what we're trying to do is to cultivate certain ethical dispositions, such as ethical reasoning skills, perspective taking, and empathy through understanding the lived experiences of others. And in fact, our project uh, right now has evolved to the present study on enacting values pedagogy. Okay, so why is this relevant for CCE? And as I mentioned, it goes beyond literature to teachers of all subject areas. The use of narratives and stories is one of the key pedagogies in the CCE syllabus. And this has occurred since, you know, at least 2000. In the 2007 syllabus, you can see that the narrative approach, right, was used, uh, you know, to develop personal reflection about personal values. But if you look at the 2021 syllabus, um, you can see there are subtle changes, right? The use of narratives um, provoke or provide the platform for ethical criticism. Okay, for example, helping students understand moral dilemmas more deeply. Okay, helping students understand how decisions are made, how they are lived out, and the consequences of actions. And these are areas related to ethical criticism because it's to do with how values are constructed and their effects. And also the use of stories to develop perspective taking so that students construct their own nar narratives and consider the narratives of others. And in the process, they also encourage student voices. So again, this aligns with ethical criticism, the whole idea of ethical deliberation and student voice. I think this, these are important outcomes. So as you can see, uh, the use of stories is a key pedagogy in CCE. There's also been a shift from using stories just for personal development to using stories for ethical reasoning. 
So in the next part, I'm going to talk about four key insights that CCE teachers can apply in their classrooms. So insight number one, make use of complex rather than didactic story. By didactic stories, is, these are stories that have like a very, you know, evident or obvious message, right? Like Aesop's fable. Now, on the other hand, complex stories do not have an obvious moral message. They have a degree of ambiguity and they require readers to kind of interpret the text, which therefore provides space for open discussion. So in my classes, I use a lot of picture books or visual text and children's picture books, right, are not just meant for preschoolers, right? They, I, I even use it in my graduate classes because some of them are really rich philosophically. So for example, this book called Walk With Me, um, it's about this girl and she talks to this lion and says, keep me company on the way home. There is already a degree of ambiguity. Who is this lion? Why does the girl need this lion to accompany her? Okay. Now, so recommended genres for a CCE class because you only have one hour a week, right? Um, make use of picture books, short films, short stories, graphic novels. Visual text may actually be more captivating for students. Uh, many of these picture books can be found on YouTube. You see teachers reading them, so you can actually just screen them in your class. So for example, let's go back to walk with me. Um, as the story continues, she says, you know, then I will have someone to talk to so I won't fall asleep. And then slowly we get more insights into this situation. She says, uh, and if you like, you can wait till mama gets home from the factory. So suddenly we are introduced to a particular group, right? The mother works in the factory. Look at how the face of the mother is depicted. It's blank. So texts that allow students to empathize with another group. In, in this case, we can see that this family become, comes from a low social economic background. Okay, and so we can ask, you know, what impression do they have of this family? Then by the time we come to the end of this book, we realize who the father, uh, the lion is, right? A father figure that's missing. But the ending of this book also has this very strange newspaper that says families of the disappeared in 1985. So as I mentioned, stories can be a launch pad for further research. This is where we can get students to think about what is the history of this group. And if we look at it deeper, uh, this concerns uh, a, a historical event in Latin America where uh, political figures were kidnapped or they disappeared um, for, for various reasons. Okay. And so we can ask who is the father? Why has he disappeared? What effect does this have? And this becomes a launch pad to discussions. Um, about the effects um, and also about, you know, single parent families and their struggles. So insight number two, introduce stories that contain minority voices. A lot of times we are reading stories that are, you know, from majority culture. So this is from our race and identity unit. Um, and it was organized around four themes. We looked at who is the other, how they are other, what are the perspectives of the other, negotiating home and belonging. And one of the intentional aims of that unit that we designed with teachers was that we wanted them, students, to read texts written by the voices of minority. We even included texts that were in translation. That means texts written originally in Malay or in uh, Tamil, right? Um, and, and it then translated. And the idea was to get them to hear the perspectives and voices of other communities that they seldom read about. Right, so this is an excerpt from the poem, What It's Like Being Malay. Okay, uh, so this, this was actually very powerful for students because uh, a lot of times they, they are either reading news articles or factual documents, but not kind of authentic narratives, okay, from minority communities. One powerful follow-up activity that occurred is that students then actually wrote about their own experiences with casual racism. This was a it's not okay activity where we get we got students to follow this template by writing uh, it's not okay blank instead try blank and these are some examples of students work. What they did is that they wrote this anonymously and then each student came up and they individually picked a, 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 a contribution from their peer and they read it aloud in the class. And this allowed the class to listen empathetically to one another to understand the viewpoints of their students, especially those from minority cultures. So stories can become a very powerful launch pad, right, to developing a culture of empathy in the classroom. 
Okay, insight three, and this I'm going to talk a little bit more about is to ask ethical questions. And this is the domain of ethical criticism. So I use the metaphor of the rocket. So stories are a launch pad. Whenever you use stories, you start off from the foundational level, respond to the text, activate their personal response. What is the story about? What is striking about it? Activate their prior knowledge. But then go into what we call textual level analysis. This is the domain of ethical criticism. We can look at the text as a thought experiment. We can engage students in ethical critique. We can get them to look at ethical dilemmas. And finally, launch into space, the literary text becomes a launch pad to intertextual connections where they engage with real world ethical issues and justice in the world. So let me give an example of uh, the points that I mentioned. So ethical thought experiment. Now, uh, literary texts, especially philosophical fiction, are very useful in provoking thought experiments, um, especially about how we should live ethics. Uh, epistemology or inquiry into knowledge, nature of reality and existence, metaphysics. Now, this, these are not uh, university level causes. I think if you look at the uh, philosophy for children's movement, these are topics that even young children can engage with. These are excerpts from the picture book, The Three Questions, right, uh, by Leo Tolstoy. And it starts with the three questions, you know, when is the best time to do things? Who is the most important one? What is the right thing to do? And we can engage students with these philosophical thought experiments through these picture books. Okay, and next, ethical critique. Now, when we look at stories, often the first thing we see is the explicit meaning, the plot, the characters, the setting. But ethical critique pushes students to look at the implicit meaning, things that are less visible to the eye, the values, the motivations, the bias, assumptions, and influences in the text. I'm running out of time, so let me just uh, go a little bit faster. So just for example, the ugly duckling story that we all know. So if you look at the, what, what's the bias in this text? I think it's very obvious. The duckling is always dark gray or brown, right? This is an excerpt. There was once an ugly duckling with feathers all stubby and brown and the birds, other birds in so many words say, get out of town. So we can ask, why is it that ugliness is associated with the color brown, whereas beauty is associated with whiteness when the duckling turns into a white swan. So ethical critique is about getting students to critique the underlying bias in text. Okay, and finally, ethical dilemmas. Complex stories often are structured around an ethical dilemma that consists of two or more options that are undesirable. And the aim is to find out what is that ethical philosophy underlying this. So this is um, another thing that we can encourage students to do, which is to use the twin cinema form or dialogic types of text. Okay, so for example, in this poem gone viral, you can read downwards in the first column, where the first voice is all about being paranoid, scrambling for math, you know, protecting ourselves. Um, the second voice is about not caring about anything. Okay, and then the, uh, which is the second column, and the third voice is reading across, which it is a balanced perspective. So look for texts that offer multiple perspectives. And this becomes a launch pad for discussion in the classroom. What are the different ways, for example, when it comes to the pandem pandemic that we can respond to um, and, and use this as a launch pad for discussion? And finally, uh, encourage student voices. I'll just go through this very quickly. Also allow students to respond personally to their peers. Um, like, for example, these are examples of creative writing that we had our students do. Um, students also got to read each other's work and comment on each other's work. This, these are examples from the race and identity unit. Okay, so in summary, I just want to say that complex stories provide that sense of mystery and openness that facilitate dialogic rather than didactic pedagogies. They serve as a hook that can engage students, and this can then lead to connections with more authentic texts, okay, like historical news and factual articles. Okay, stories can be taught, taught using ethical criticism where you get kids to critically analyze and dialogue about values. And in this process, what we're doing is sharpening their ethical reasoning and perception. Stories can cultivate empathy. And if we are thinking about um, discussing sensitive issues like race and religion, they are especially powerful because it allows students to take a distance and engage with fictional characters rather than real world characters first. 
So this becomes the ground uh, for empathy and examination of text from multiple perspectives. And from our research, it was especially powerful when teachers from different schools came together working with NIE researchers to design and collaborate units around local and global issues. Um, I think it was ex the teachers especially appreciated uh, these collaborative opportunities. Okay, uh, so just let me end. Um, I'm just going to skip this quote. You can take a look uh, uh, in the slides, but um, this is a book in case you're interested, Teaching Ethics Through Literature. Uh, and do visit my website if you have further questions. Thank you. I think I've gone over for about five minutes. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dr. Chu. Uh, and, and thank you for sharing your insights from your research studies.